then, and that's going to take away a lot of the grip, Anthony Davidson, and make turn one very interesting indeed. Yeah, it's these kind of conditions where you can go in with one of two mindsets. You either see it as an opportunity or you're worried that all of your hard work's about to be undone. We've been stuck in these conditions now for a few hours, but more or less this kind of intensity, so we don't seem to have too much standing water, so we're not likely to be starting behind a safety car. And like you say, Crofty, the charge down into Turn 1 will be quite interesting. I think we're in for a cracking Grand Prix. What is up guys, Jeffrey Gaming here, welcome to a very wet round 2 of my classic championship season. This is the Brazilian Grand Prix, if you're new to my channel do remember to hit that subscribe button and do go check out the first race of the season in Australia if you've missed it already. It was a really good race and we got a real feel of how this season might go. Uh, for this race I have put the difficulty up to uh, 102 out of 110, it was 100 for the first race so this should be a lot more difficult especially with these tricky conditions but 5 lights and... With the Brazilian Grand Prix is away and we, we should get these Renaults pretty easily. We don't want to get bullied like we did in the first race of the season. I mean, we got a good start but then we just got pushed all over the place and then lost all our positions pretty much straight away. But this time, it seems to be a lot cleaner through the center rest there, up to P13. And I haven't actually played this game for a couple of days and this was the first time using this F2004 in the rain. And I've got to say this was very tricky. The back end seemed to step out so often. In terms of the strategy, I went for one to the left, and I'm not sure if that was the correct choice. I wanted a little bit of straight line speed, as I knew there would be fighting through the field, which I will be doing every single race after. We do use one-shot qualifying, but I just instantly retire, so we start at the back of the field. It's a shame, really. I wish I could customise the grid, otherwise I'd put all the F2004s at the back and have like the Renaults at the front, that would be very interesting, but as we come out of Zhang Xiao here to end the first lap, we're going to see now, do we have the straight line speed to overtake quite a few of these cars ahead of us, I think they're both McLarens, so let's see if we can go for the move here, yes we can, pretty easily I've got to say, but later on the brakes that McLaren is, and yeah we need to get our braking zones uh, sorted, and just get used to them as soon as we can, we can see we did struggle under braking and we're working the wheel so hard, because the back end is really slipping and sliding all over the place. But into the middle sector, compared to these cars, we seem to be pretty strong because they really are in a bit of a follow the leader train as uh, the Codemasters F1 games are pretty well known for. A little bit of contact there with the move. We didn't turn in as early as we should have, but at least we're getting closer and closer to the top 10. And onto the back of another McLaren by the looks of things. And coming through Zhang Xiao again, hopefully. We can make the most of the straight line speed because I'd imagine we should have the fastest uh, straight, well, the best straight line speed, the fastest car, obviously, with all the uh, track records that Michael Schumacher set in 2004. And now we're going to go for a slipstream rich mix. Can we outbreak the McLaren into turn one? No, we can't because it's not even a McLaren. <laughs> Up the inside of the 2007 Ferrari there. A little bit of contact once again. He's getting very aggressive there on the exit. That's uh, Kimi Raikkonen's world championship winning car. And yeah, pretty good defensive driving there from the driver. But we go up the inside. And once again, we're just not late enough on the brakes. We have to go down to second gear so we don't understeer into the side of the Ferrari. But luckily... We get slightly better traction even though we fight the car, fight the wheel and <laughs> somehow get ourselves up to P10. But we've lost a bit of momentum compared to the top 9 here and we just need to fight back. Uh, get into a groove. I've started to feel a bit of a groove after about 4 or 5 laps but still. It seemed like the conditions were very tricky. This Belasov guy in the Red Bull seemed to be incredibly slow. So I don't know if he's just dropped from the front of the field after a great qualifying. But uh, yeah, he didn't seem to have great straight line speed. Well, once again he fights back. As uh, the AI seem to be doing on the exit of the center S, need to work on the exit there. Uh, but with the straight line speed we have, this should be relatively easy overtake. The Red Bull not great in a straight line, but obviously fantastic through the corners. Classic Adrian Newey car, up to P9 now. And I was just looking at the minimap, the top three are really getting away, and they're the three F2004 cars. There's actually a fourth car, which is pretty close to them, which you've got to say is a bit of, of a surprise, because I feel like this car is overpowered compared to the rest of the field, but... With us fighting from the back, it's going to be such a challenge, especially in these intermediate conditions and 102 uh, difficulty for the AI. And at this point, I was thinking this is probably going to be a bit of a damage limitation race because I don't think I'm going to be catching up to the top three. They keep setting faster slap after faster slap, all three of the drivers mixing it up. And my lap times were probably about half a second slower than theirs, unfortunately. But I skipped 
So on to lap 9 now and I was looking at the tyre wear and this was supposed to be a no stop race and I was getting very concerned here. There's no way we can make it to the end with that kind of tyre wear. And I was just hoping, surely it's not me, I can't be the only one destroying my tyres like this. I know I've been fighting the car quite a lot and sliding around but surely it can't just be me. So at the end of lap 9 I decided to come into the pits and I really was concerned. Why is no one else pitting? Surely. It can't just be us, and if it is us, then we're going to be absolutely screwed. I'd imagine we're going to finish pretty near the back. I mean, we might get the fastest of the race or something, but we're coming into the pits for our first pit stop in this F2004. The gen generic pit entity is there, and away we go. 2.9, not a great stop, but I suppose for the olden days for this car, that probably would have been a good stop, even though they obviously had refueling back then. And, uh, yeah, we should probably disengage the pit limiter. I, I kind of thought that... Uh, We'd have to do that later on. I, I just must have forgot, unfortunately. So we did lose a couple of seconds there. And we're coming out in a very solid P20 out of 20. So we're obviously going to be a lot quicker than the guys ahead of us. But the thing is, can we fight back? And will the rest of the field pit? Ah, oh, I'd be absolutely devastated if no one else pit. So with all that rich mix, we can probably go to the end. I mean, I've been running in rich mix for most of the race. And the fuel is not going down. So I think I actually could have used that a little bit earlier. Fortunately for us, I noticed on lap 12, after we set the fast start of the race, my teammates come into the pits. So, we got the undercut um, in terms of gaining uh, time to my teammate. And, uh, yeah, he's right in the pack. Or oh, she's in the pack. I actually think it's a female driver. But lap 13 now, and we're catching up to the back of two Renaults. And more drivers are in the pits. So, hallelujah. We have a bit of luck here. And we go around the outside of this Renault. Pretty simple. And we actually might get two Renaults on the st start finish straight. Unfortunately, 2006 was a slower the year than 2004. Up to P15 now, but it's a strange strategy from the AI. Surely if you know you're going to pit, you'd pit on lap 9 instead of pitting at the end of lap 13 where you have like a 5 lap stint at the end. I don't know, it's really weird, but we go for a switch back on this uh, F2002 Ferrari. As they come out of the pits, the undercut seems to work, to work here. Uh, the Quesada guy, I'm pretty sure I was behind him earlier on, so... With this undercut could work for us and hopefully it elevates us into the points. So I don't think we'll be challenging the top three F2004s. So I was aiming for P4. Um, I feel like we'll have better pace later on in the season. Probably at a dry track and a track that I'm actually better at. So a couple of other drivers coming out the pits now. That could be us up to P7. I think it is indeed. We'll have a quick look backwards towards the pits. And yeah, they're not that close to us. So we're okay now. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple of drivers ahead of us yet to pit. So we actually are in the points. And that's going to give me a little bit of solace. So we have actually... I keep saying actually. I've noticed that. There's my teammate Marie Lawson. Um, yeah, dominating the field once again in the lead. Now the undercuts definitely worked for her. And it's worked for me in terms of getting us through the field. And bringing me closer to the top four. So P5 now. Roth ahead of me. I'm pretty sure is in a different car to myself. So I was trying my best to chase him down. With three laps to go. I thought could it be possible? Do we have the pace? Unfortunately we just didn't have the pace. Compared to the other drivers in the same car as us. And uh, in the co last couple of laps. I was only taking a tenth or two out of Roth. So it doesn't look like we're going to be improving on our fifth position. Unfortunately. But at least we've been able to salvage a couple of points. From this very tricky race. I mean, I think from laps like 4 till 9, I just didn't really have the pace. But as soon as I put the fresh tyres on, I felt pretty confident. So we're coming to the line of the second race of the season, Brazilian Grand Prix, and we're going to end it in P5. So at least we bring a couple of points home for ourselves with the classic scoring system, 10, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it's time to wind down and celebrate after that fantastic Grand Prix. Here they come, your top three, out onto the podium. So that is the result of the classic uh, Brazilian Grand Prix. It was actually a Red Bull that beat us there, which I've got to say is a little bit of a, of a surprise considering how easily we overtook Belisov earlier on. So Marie Lawson wins two races in a row. She seems to be dominating the field. And I just, I just think it's really good that a woman's winning this championship because obviously they weren't included in previous games. I apologize for the random cars 
on this driver standing screen that looks like it's a bit of a glitch but we're fourth out of the 4F 2004 so we've got to improve on that but at least we're not that far behind a couple of uh, good races and hopefully we can challenge for the title but it's all in good fun really that's what we're aiming for just to drive this awesome car so if you have enjoyed this video please do leave a like subscribe if you haven't already to my channel thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you next time out goodbye